Christ is risen. Welcome to worship on this third Sunday in the season of Easter. And thank you so much for worshiping with our Savior Lutheran Church in Thomaston, Connecticut. Our mission is to share the unconditional love of God unconditionally. And thank you so much for being a part of that mission. We hope that you will join us in sharing love, mercy, and grace with everyone that you meet. let's pray. O oh God, your son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the people. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and it exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vow to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O oh Lord, is the death of your servants. O oh Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people, in the courts of the Lord's house, 
in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Hallelujah. A reading from 1 Peter. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord, according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were walking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them 
in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please pray with me. God, our perfect parent, our steadfast friend, healer of all hurts, creator of the canvas of life, you call us to have faith that there is far more to the paintings of our lives than what we are able to perceive. You dry our tears. You soothe our restless hearts and minds. And yet we still weep. And yet we are still restless. These days, the road to Emmaus seems to stretch on before us. Many of us struggle to see the outline of your promised kingdom in the distance. Many of our hearts are broken. And so we turn to you, the source of all hope, our dearest friend and guide. Help us on our present journeys. Show us that even though we are physically apart, we are together in the body of Christ, moving ever closer to the kingdom goal. In the name of our resurrection hope, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So I want to start today with a question, which is fairly typical, um, if you've heard me preach before. But my question for us today is, where are you finding God? Where are you finding God these days? Not long after I had arrived to our Savior Lutheran Church in Thomaston in March of last year, 2019, I was invited to the home of one of the families of this congregation. And I remember that night very well. We sat outside for a long time, laughing and talking and getting to know each other. The conversation was easy. And it was easy because the people were genuine. Before that evening, I knew that I was called to this congregation. I knew that I loved it here. I knew that the people of this community are faithful and that you possess care and compassion for your neighbors. And I did, even before I got here, I did truly believe that we would have a great relationship. But after that night, I knew that God was truly and is truly at work in this community. And I also knew that I belonged here. You could say um, that my eyes were opened. And so right now I'm thinking about that night and sitting outside with Scott and Rosanna and seeing God at work in them. And God at work in their love, their love for each other, for their family, for their community. God at work in their warmth, in their care. And I'm thinking about how I see God at work in each and every single one of you when we're together on Sunday, when we're together on Tuesday night when we open our doors to folks experiencing hunger and homelessness, when we're out in the community talking about all the wonderful things that are going on here. And I'm thinking about how I see God at work in this community and at work in you because God's love is palpable. God's love is palpable here at Our Savior. You can feel it. You can feel God's love. It's so genuine. It's so honest and real. But what about now? What about now when we can't be together? Where do you find, where are you finding God in the midst of a pandemic? So two disciples are on their way to Emmaus, seven miles away from Jerusalem. The text doesn't say it, but I bet they are 
walking as fast as they possibly can. Maybe they're even running. And they're talking about everything that they've just experienced. They've been amazed by everything that Jesus did, healing the sick, liberating those imprisoned in body or in mind, feeding the hungry, raising the dead. Jesus had taught them all about God's love, how it isn't reserved for a select few, but rather it's freely offered to everyone. He had taught them about how we are God's hands and feet in the world. We are the body, the body of Christ, that our resources come from God, and therefore we should generously offer those resources to our neighbor in need. Because my neighbor's suffering is my suffering, and my neighbor's triumph is my triumph. And then they talked about, I'm sure, powerful politicians and religious leaders who had conspired against this man because the wealthy and powerful never want to share. They didn't care if he was the Messiah. They weren't interested in figuring out where God was in this wandering teacher and healer from Nazareth. They needed to get rid of him so that they could retain their wealth and power. And so they killed him publicly, gruesomely, so that everyone would know that the price for finding God in Jesus was death. And so they ran. They weren't going to be next. And how terrified they must have been when they're on this seven-mile road to Emmaus and a stranger appears. And I sort of suspect that that's why they didn't recognize him, because they were too afraid, too traumatized by what they had witnessed in Jerusalem, feeling too guilty and too alone in their grief. It wasn't until they sat down to eat with him that they finally recognized that this was not a stranger at all. This was Jesus, God with us, returned from death just to be with them. And then suddenly they weren't afraid anymore. After everything they had experienced, all the destruction, all the fear, the pain, the grief, they realized that God had been with them through it all and God would be with them on the journey ahead. Even in the best of circumstances, I think my experience has been um, that all too often we are like the two disciples, unable to recognize God in our midst. I think that we should take some comfort in the fact that much like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, even when we are unable to recognize God, God is still with us. Right now, it might feel like recognizing God at work in your life, in our world, is impossible. When we're in it when we're in it, you know what I'm saying? When our grief is raw, when our pain is unimaginable, when fear is real and valid, it's easy to believe that God has abandoned us. But even though we might be afraid, even though many of us are experiencing unimaginable grief, even though the pain and uncertainty of these times might feel like too much to bear, even though we can't be together to laugh and cry and talk 
and reflect God for each other, I'm telling you, God is here. God is with you. And I know that because I have seen God at work in you. I've witnessed your faith and your doubts and your struggles. I know that you know that God isn't placing obstacles in front of you. God is guiding you over these obstacles. And God is journeying with you on the road ahead. You might be in it right now. But God is in it with you. Even though we can't be together at this moment, even though all of the familiar ways that we reveal God's kingdom come near in the sharing of Holy Communion, in Holy Baptism, in hugs, in handshakes, in being within six feet of each other. My friends, God is with you. God is still with you. God will never abandon you. And my friends, now and always, you are not alone. Amen. Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, prairies, forests, valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing, and desiring healing in body and spirit. We pray aloud or in the silence of our hearts for all those who are on our hearts and in our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of our Savior Lutheran Church in Thomaston, for those preparing for baptism, First Communion, Confirmation, and membership. This morning we pray especially for Charlie Rajak, who was to be baptized today. For those who participate in Sunday school and adult education, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. This morning we pray especially for Rosanna, Adriana, Christopher, Carol, and Frank, that they would be comforted by the promise of resurrection and the love of God reflected by their family, friends, and neighbors. We pray today especially for everyone who loves Scott. We pray for Al and Linda and their family, for Chris Musgrave and her family, for Margaret, Bruce, Zachary, and their family, that they would all experience God's love, peace, and comfort through the love and support of family, friends, and healthcare providers. We pray for all working in healthcare settings and for all essential employees, that they and their families would know safety and peace to continue in their important work. We pray especially for Rachel, Maggie, Joe, Gretchen, Amber, Allison, Melanie, Christine, Alex, Andrew, Ann, Kate, Mike, Natalie, and all those we name aloud or silently. For all who are afraid, for all who are alone, and for all who are anxious in the face of uncertainty, give us the creativity to imagine meaningful ways to support each other and to be community from a distance. We pray for all who have lost employment, for all whose businesses are suffering, for all who have lost income, for all who have lo lost a sense of stability. Inspire us to support our neighbor, to care for hourly workers, service workers, retail workers, and small businesses. We pray for all who work in grocery stores, for farmers, for truckers, for everyone keeping us fed, that they and their families would be strengthened for this vital work. We pray especially for Molly and for Jamie and for all those we name aloud or silently. For the sick, that they would be healed through the skill and care of medical professionals and that they would know God's peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, especially Scott, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, you are invited to make your offering to God. Although we can't be together in person, the work of the body of Christ continues. To feed our neighbors, to bind up the brokenhearted, to be models of justice, mercy, and grace. Thank you. Thank you for your support of this vital work. We pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Strengthen us for service in your name. In the name of the risen Christ, 
Amen. I invite you to join me in saying the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now, may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share this good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.